In case you haven't heard, Maya 2024 just released with a bunch of new features, but today we're gonna focus on the animation specific stuff. There's a lot of graph editor improvements, some new tools that animators may be using. If you are in games or motion capture workflows, there's actually a lot of stuff you're gonna really like. I'll also be adding some of these new features into the course curriculum for my Maya for Animators workshop, which is linked down below. If you wanna check it out and sign up for that workshop, it will have some of the stuff in there. But for now, let's take a look at what's new. We'll link this page down below if you wanna check it out, but if you don't keep super up to date with the different updates that Maya comes out with and the new features and things like that, there is a link here, which is pretty cool, of uh, on Autodesk area site, it'll show you the Maya timeline of various features and things. So if you're curious what new stuff Maya does and when those updates came out, you can check that out in scroll. It's kind of cool. So jumping over to what's new in this version of the software, there are some great graph editor workflow stuff. Uh, they have sculpting tools that are pretty cool. So you can now grab a, a point on a curve or an area of the curve with a with a fall off that you can adjust and it will pull your entire graph editor curve radius along for the ride. Um, there's also smoothing, which if you have really janky data, will, as you can see, it will smooth it. Um, and then you have smear, which will just kind of like pull everything in, in, in that general direction. Real quick, who is this useful for? If you are an animation student, something like Animation Mentor or anything with stylized character animation where you are you know, you're doing key poses and your breakdowns and anticipations and stuff. This is probably not a super useful set of tools for you today. This is more for people working in the industry who are working with motion capture or animation data with a, a lot of keys, very high density key data on a lot of different curves. It's great for cleaning up those kinds of curves and for making broad adjustments to animation with a lot of data packed in there. The character animation section, this is kind of more of a rigging thing. So if you are a rigger, you can now visualize your weight painting in much more detail by actually showing the numerical values. What's cool about this is not only can you show the numerical values per vertex, but you can also color ramp them like this. And so if you have curvature pockets within your mesh that maybe you wouldn't notice an issue with the weight painting, this can help you catch those things. There is actually an interesting thing here. Something that's pretty cool too is my last video covered gimbal lock in great detail, exactly what gimbal lock is, how it works, what to do about it, and so on. In that video, I showed you a method using Animbot of how to diagnose your animation curves and see if they have gimbal lock and how to fix them. There's actually a rotation order setting built into Maya now. So that Animbot feature is now included in Maya 2024, where you can check a control or a joint of your rig and Maya will analyze the rotation order of whether or not it is gimbal locked. And when you apply a change, it will reevaluate the animation data through that curves animation so that it can change the rotation order without changing your animation. But that's super important because the video I did on gimbal lock was really comprehensive and covered everything. And literally the next day, my time upon filming this, there's a new feature. So that's great. This is an amazing, super helpful feature that may seem really technical and like, oh, I'm not gonna need that. Trust me, watch that other video if you haven't already. Every animator will deal with gimbal lock. So check out that video and keep this tool in mind. There's a bunch of stuff in here for human IK character templates and various deformers that are used with rigging and proximity pins and things like this. Even though it talks about what's new in character animation, this is more geared towards riggers for character animation. So let's continue on to the graph editor improvement section. You can see it's, it's starting off kind of talking about the features we already talked about, but there's also a new key scaling widget. Uh, you could do this before in the graph editor, there's a button right here, actually, if you can see where my mouse is. This little button is a key scaling thing that exists in the graph editor. I think I covered it in my graph editor video. Actually, this is what I was talking about. This is the region key tool. I don't know what this, I've never I've never known the name of this. I always thought of it as the scaling tool where you can grab a section and you can see it gives you little handles and it's easier to scale your stuff, but there's a new widget to do it even better now. Great. And then these new features about offset and clamping, the one idea that came to mind of why you might want to use something like this, if you look at the second example here, see how you can clamp the upper or lower bounds of a curve and say, okay, you're not allowed to go above this point or lower than this point. So you can kind of set a limit on your animation curves. That could be a really cool thing if you had, uh, you know, a bunch of data or, you know, a bunch of walking animation or something and the feet are going below the, the ground or objects are intersecting with other objects and they shouldn't be, you could technically use clamping to, to limit things so that they feel like they contact a surface versus passing through it. So again, if you had like mocap or something that could help you clean it up faster. But this one is super cool. New remove keys feature. I can't tell you how many times this has happened to me, especially when I was a student, that when you grab a bunch of keys and maybe you scale those keys or you retime your animation or you get notes that have you change stuff. And so anyway, 
a lot of times what might happen is you could end up not having the settings set properly to auto snap your keys or math things happen that are weird and you end up with a key that's on a partial frame where maybe you have a key on frame 10 and a key on frame 11 but there's another key that's an old key it's an outdated key on frame 10.0001 or something and it's really hard to see it and you don't know what's going on but your curve is just doing things that are weird and you think why is that happening it's because you have a hidden key somewhere on some non-integer value frame. If that sounds familiar, you now have a button to just delete unsnapped values. That's great. You can also delete any and all keys before or after a certain point in your animation if you're trying to clear out some stuff, or if you wanna just preserve a certain section of your animation and blow everything else away. Sometimes that happens. There's some cool stuff for that. Ripple delete's interesting, and that's a, that's a very common like video editing way of deletion where, you know, let's say you have 100 frames of stuff and you clear out the middle you know, 50 frames or something. Ripple Delete will get rid of all of that, but it'll take all the later stuff and truncate it back so that your 100 frames doesn't just have a gap in the middle. It all deletes and goes to fill the space. This one's called Animation Performance Improvement, and this is just a bunch of under the hood stuff to help your rigs evaluate faster. I don't think in this video we need to cover how this works or what you need to know. It's basically just Maya continuing to improve on how useful the hardware in your computer is when evaluating data in the computer. So the time slider design is new. So when you open Maya, you can see that it's a little bit fresher, a little bit different looking. The timeline had bookmarks, but they've updated them to be a little bit better to do more stuff. So there's various things here for bookmarks and there's icons now for, for drag selecting through the timeline. They're trying to make the timeline more useful instead of just being a visual indicator where your keys are. They're trying to make it a little bit more intuitive so that you can actually work with your animation data more clearly with these icons and stuff. That's always great. And there's just some other visual changes here to the handles for stuff, how audio is shown in here, things like that. And one last feature that I wanna just call out, if you are working on an Apple computer, a MacBook or whatever, Apple Silicon is now supported natively for Maya. So if you have an M1 or an M2 Mac, if you're using the new stuff, it'll be a lot faster now. Now, when I started filming this video, I actually wanted to tell you like, heads up, there's some issues, known issues with Maya. If you're considering upgrading, I actually just didn't read because I clicked on fixed issues and I was like, oh no, all these things are still broken. Now these are fixed. So glad I read because that would have been embarrassing. So if like me, you are using Maya 2023 or if you're using anything earlier, if you have any of these problems, if you upgrade to 2023.1, 2 or 3 service packs, or if you go straight to 2024, all these things get fixed. And we're not going to spend much time in Maya. I just want to show you when you open Maya 2024 for the first time, you'll see that the, the timeline is visibly different. It has these different like little segments to it. The frame range handles look a little bit different, a little bit more sleek, a little more streamlined. And as a reminder that if you do upgrade to a new version of Maya, you want to double check your preferences because even if you copy them all over, sometimes things don't end up exactly as you had them. Auto key, we should turn that on. We should check our undo cache and I don't like infinite. I like value of 500. There's a bunch of stuff you want to check. So just take a minute, go through your settings and make sure that it's ready for you to animate. But if you look closely, you'll see some other stuff like there's an Arnold button to start and stop Arnold in the viewport. That's new. The new uh, look dev X graph creator is here. Looks kind of like the hypershade, but it's different than the hypershade. A bunch of new stuff. And if you go to the graph editor, you might notice that there are little tabs that need expanding. And that's where we can find our new tools inside of these different areas. I didn't cover this stuff because I don't think most people watching need this. You can check the documentation if you disagree. But with that, I think that covers the new stuff in Maya 2024. We got some new stuff for animation, especially if you use motion capture that I think is gonna be really, really useful. But let me know down below if I missed anything and what features you'd like to see in future versions of Maya. Personally, I'd love to see the procedural noise that you can do in Blender's graph editor where you can just create a noise amplitude wave thing in the graph editor. I think that's really cool. I'd love to see that added to Maya at some point in the future. And if you use Maya to animate or you want to learn how to use the software to do all kinds of cool stuff, I'll have a link down below to my Maya for Animators workshop, which luckily, because this came out before the workshop happens, I will be including these new graph editor tools in the course curriculum for my workshop. So if you are trying to learn Maya or you're signing up for my workshop, know that the stuff that we talked about today will it'll be in there. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next video.